Hi everybody, welcome to the channel. My name is Scott and today I'm going to be showing you how to install the ultimate accessory for a C7 Corvette. I'm happy to say that Wind Restrictor is sponsoring the Corvette channel and in doing so they've authorized me to be able to give you a 10% discount on everything that you see on their site. So I'm going to be posting a link and also a, a coupon code that you can use on their site or you can call into their customer service and order it that way and you'll be able to receive the 10% off. Now let me tell you about the, the product just a little bit. The, the product is a genuine licensed product from GM and they offer a whole bunch of different emblems and logos that you can put on it or, you can, or they can help you make a custom one. They not only make them for the Corvettes but they make them for other brands also. Uh, Chevrolet, Ford, uh, Mercedes, a whole bunch. So uh, check out their site. I'm sure that you'll really love what you see. So before we get started, let me tell you a little bit about Wind Restrictor. They're a US based company based out of Dallas, Texas, and they do all of their manufacturing at their plant in Dallas. They offer 24 hour support via a chat session through their website, and they also offer a lifetime guarantee on this product. You can't ask for much better. Everyone that I've spoken to at the company has just been great. They've been really nice and helpful. And so that gives you that nice, warm, fuzzy feeling. The restrictor comes with a five page instruction sheet, has five steps. And if you follow these steps in the order that they're in, you'll have no problem installing it. So before we get started, I just wanted to show you the tools that you're going to need, and it covers it in the instructions, but I just want to look, show you what you're going to need. First of all, the very beginning of the instructions, it doesn't say that you need a hair dryer, but later on in the instructions it does, so I just wanted to point this out. You're going to need this to be able to heat up the, uh, the adhesive on the mounting brackets. So you can use this or a heat gun, either one, but um, a, a uh, hair dryer is going to be more than enough. Now, you're also going to need a, a putty knife and a, um, a T40 Torx as well as an X-Acto knife. Now, I took the liberty of getting a little uh, squeegee scraper that's made out of plastic. In the event that I find that I feel I need to use this rather than using this sharp metal blade, I'll be able to use it. So I just gathered it all up. So that's what I advise you have um, when you, before you get started. So that way you're not hunting down parts. So the first thing you're going to want to do is you need to be able to open the door, get your seats moved all the way forward, and your seat backs pushed all the way toward the steering wheel. And then we're going to pop the trunk, we're going to take out the carpet, and we're going to take out the, uh, the privacy liner that we've got in there so it gives us room to be able to work inside the car. And in this case, it will allow for the camera to be able to show you all the things I'm doing. So I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to move the seat forward. like so. Okay, and I'm moving the seat back all the way forward. Just like so. And then we're just going to pop the trunk here. I already had it open. And then we're going to take the, the cover off here. We don't have to take the top one off because it's not in the way. I'm going to take this loose like so. And get it out of the way. And then if those of you that have a, uh, a custom carpet in the back, you're going to want to take that out. Um, it doesn't have to come out permanently. It's just, just for during the in installation because we're actually going to be using, we're going to have to take the, the uh, I have a light in here to show you, this D-ring right here, we're going to have to take that loose so that way we can get this carpet up and out of the way so we can get into the fuse box to power the light assembly once we get it in. So, um, so we're just going to go ahead and open this door here, move the seat forward. Just like so. And it's out of the way. For filming purposes only, I took the top off. Now if you want to take it off, it probably makes it just that little bit easier, but it's not needed. So 
but this will make it so the camera can get in there and see everything that you guys need to be able to see. Okay, before we get started here in the trunk area, I just wanted to cover something that isn't in the instructions, but I just wanted to point it out, just better be safe than sorry. Um, you're going to be leaning into the car a lot. You're going to be working over here, removing this D-ring here in a second. And then we're going to be pulling this carpet back, and we're going to be looking in the computer area that's right over here underneath my hand, right here underneath where the battery's at. So you're going to be back and forth. And so you want to make sure that you don't get any scratches on your fender. And so what I did is I removed my belt and I pulled my shirt out to cover everything here. Um, but uh, you know you can also use a fender cover or something like that or a towel. But uh, I just wanted to cover that ahead of time so we don't end up with any accidental scratches. We've got this this template here that they provide and it's uh, it's dual sided. So you've got one side is for the driver, the other side is for the passenger, and they both have some uh, sticky tape on here. So basically what's going to happen is that it's going to go up in here like so. But before you do that, you're going to want to wipe this, this uh, window trim here. It's a windowsill. You're going to wipe that down with alcohol. It's like so. Really guys, I do actually clean my car. It doesn't look like it, huh? Okay, so we're going to allow that to dry for a second. This template shows it's the driver's side, but the sticky part is for the bottom. So because what we're doing is we're pulling the sticky tape off of the bottom side to be able to use it for the driver. Then when we get to the other side, we're actually will be flipping it over and we'll use the sticky that's over here on the driver's side to stick down to the passenger side. Okay, now the other thing and I'll explain that to you here in just a second. We're going to go ahead and take this uh, the sticky off and we're going to align it up here in the windowsill. Now what you want is you can feel the difference between the um, the windowsill and then the fabric itself. So you're going to want to get it right on that line right as it goes right up there. You're putting it up against the glass and you're putting it up against this part of the windowsill and then you're just going to stick press and hold it there for a second to make it stick. Okay, so they supply us with a, uh, a primer, a 3M primer pin that is used, and we're, we're going to use that here inside this cutout area of the template. And this is used to be able to make sure that the adhesive of the bracket itself, which is right here, is going to stick and hold, um, you know, in the, uh, in the windowsill. So you have to press this little black dot right here. You crush that, you know if you heard that or not, you crush it, and then at that point you can start it'll start filling the the um material here and then you can start painting it on. Just like so. So you want to paint that on like like that. Make sure that it's totally totally covered. Just like that. And then you're going to just let that dry for a minute. So what we're doing here is we want to warm this adhesive up. Um, and like I was talking about, you can use a heat gun if you want. You're probably going to burn your fingers holding it out like this. But all we're doing is that we're going to just we're just going to heat this up with a hair dryer just to get the adhesive nice and warm. And then I'm doing this before we um, while I'm waiting for the adhesive promoter. Um, to dry inside the car. So we're just heating this up here. Alright, so the next step is that we've allowed this to dry and I went ahead while we were waiting for it to dry, I pre-started the, uh, the tape, peeled it back, and we're gonna go ahead and we're just literally gonna set this bracket inside the hole here and then press it down. Now I want to point out something, and this was this was uh, told to me by the by the folks at Wind Restrictor that this is kind of an optical illusion. Everyone that does this thinks that it doesn't it isn't going on straight. But if you look in the instructions, it'll show you that it is at an angle, and that you need to go ahead and just trust the template. Don't don't uh, go oh this isn't right and and freak out. This is actually the way it goes on. So I'm just pulling the tape off of here and 
I'm gonna stick this little guy. You wanna make sure that the, the nut here that holds the restrictor on is facing to the back and that the uh, that you're just gonna put it right in the hole. Now that we've got that totally down there, it's it's tight. It's not coming off. So we're just going to go ahead and we're going to release release the template here and peel it up off like that. So that little guy is all set to go. And that one's not coming off. So now we're going to go ahead and we're going to move to the passenger side. So we're on the passenger side now and we've got the we've taken that template off from the other side and we've just flipped it over where it says passenger and we're going to again wipe this off. Get that window sill nice and clean. The oils off. And then we're just going to let that dry for a second. Okay, so we let the uh, alcohol dry. And so now what we're going to do is we're going to take that, that tape off that we were talking about. Even though we're using the, again, remember, we're using the driver, the passenger side, but we're going to take the tape off of the driver. Okay. And we're going to align it back up here again, like I said, where we're up against the glass. And we are right at the seam between the windowsill and the fabric. Okay. And we're going to get it right to there like that. And then we're going to hold it down. let it adhere for a second there. Okay, just like that. So then what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our little ad adhesive promoter that we've got here, and we're gonna go ahead and paint that spot again, all the way around in here. All right, so now that part's done. So now I'm gonna grab the grab the other bracket, if I can get it here, and I'm gonna go ahead and jump outside of the car here, and Jennifer's gonna move the camera over and we'll go ahead and we'll heat this one up. Once we get this one warm, this should be dry, and we'll go ahead and we'll stick this one on, and then we'll be We'll be done with the the bracket part of the installation. So we're we're just gonna go ahead and heat this one up here. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna pull the the adhesive backing off, and hopefully this one will come off okay. There we go. Now remember what we said is that we want to make sure that these nuts are actually pointing backwards and so it's going to go in like so. Okay, so we've got this dry, we've got this nice and warm, and we're going to set this right inside that, that template and we're going to set it in there and, that, and press down. And there you go. So those are mounted. We've got the, the deflector now, and you notice I'm wearing white gloves. They actually supply the gloves, and this way you're not getting your fingerprints all over the glass. Um, and what you want to do is they supply you with some of the cleaner that you need to use for this. You don't want to use Windex or anything like that because it will it's very rough and it will scratch this and it will void your warranty. So make sure that you, um, when you run out of what they supply you, make sure you buy some more of it. And in the instructions, they actually supply, they tell you what it is. So um, that way, you know, this will be looking good forever, okay? 
So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and move it in here and we're going to mount it into brackets and we'll get it in there. So what you want to do is you want to try to avoid the seat belts because it just loves eating your legs. So you get your get your restrictor in there or you can kind of keep it balanced. You're going to take the knob off on both sides. get it where it's handy and then what you're going to do is you're actually just going to set this up you're going to get it up here get it up into the windowsill and now if you notice you're wanting to put the you're wanting to put it so the the uh, picture is actually correct looking from the back from the trunk area okay so you're going to put that like that get this one on there at the top and you can see right there that that fits in there perfect. So like we were talking about with those brackets, that looks like it would fit, it wouldn't fit right. But uh, like I said, just trust those templates and it'll work just fine. So now once we've got the the restrictor in place, we're just going to go ahead and put, gonna put the put the mounting bracket up there like so. Okay, kind of hold it in place, and then we're going to put the knob on. And then we're going to do the other side and then we'll put this other bracket on here and then we can snug everything up. So now like I was saying, you need to trust those t the the uh, templates because it looks like it doesn't fit but it actually does nice and tight. I'll go back over to the other side here. Snug this one up. All right. First thing we're going to do here is we're going to go ahead and take the, the cover off and then this will expose the 40, uh, 40 Torx that's underneath here. So we're just going to use a, uh, a putty knife to pop this off, like so. And then we're going to use our, our 40 Torx here. pull the carpet back. Now you don't want to just yank this carpet up. Um, if you do it's going to end up tearing right here because it's totally tucked underneath this plastic. So what you want to do is you want to get underneath it from from the battery area and you're going to just like reach underneath with your hands and you're going to lift up and out on this until it comes free. Okay, Just like so. And then we're going to roll this over to get it out of our way. Now the instructions show that or tell you to use like a 2x4 or something like that to be able to prop it across from here to here so this stays out of your way. What you can do is you can actually take this electric cover here, the, the electronics cover, 
and you can prop it up over here, over here like that. And what that does, it leaves you the legend for your fuse panel right here that matches your actual fuse panel down here so you'll know exactly which fuse you're going to be pulling. We're actually taking the wire from the wind restrictor itself and we're bringing it across the uh, across the top and we're tucking it into into the, the rubber here. Um, so we're just going to pull it across like so. We're tucking it up in here like so, like this. So that's nice and smooth. Nice and flush there. And we're going to tuck that all the way around. There's no pressure on this at all, so it's not like it's going to fall out or anything like that. This rubber's, uh, rubber's going to just hold it in place. So not a big deal there. You just want to try to make sure that it stays flat and that it's not trying to turn on you, which is what it will try to do. Now once we get to this point here, you can see right here that we need to go down now. And then we're going to go right down this edge where the, where the plastic meets the carpet here. And this is what I was talking about in the very beginning about having the little, uh, a little squeegee. It's, uh, I didn't want to use metal up against this carpet, it's probably going to snag a little bit. So we use that to get in there and we can wedge that open. So we can get we can get this wire up in there without without having to uh, to hurt the carpet or the or the metal. So we can wedge that open like so, and we can tuck that wire right down in there. Like that. that goes right in there and it's hollow down in there so it's not like it's it's not gonna be catching anything in there and then you can pull it back and then you get it down down here okay and there we go in this section of the video you'll be watching me install the multi-light kit for the multicolor wind restrictor. If you purchase a single light wind restrictor, you'll only have two wires and you'll be able to skip forward. I've gone ahead and put the timestamp up on the screen so you'll be able to fast forward to that section. But just to recap for the people that have the single, uh, single color two wire setup, I'm going to be putting a diagram up here on the screen and it will show you the two wires and that you're going to take the positive wire and you're going to connect it to the wire tap and then you're going to put a connector, uh, an eyelet connector on the negative, and that negative wire will go to the battery or the, the body ground, and then you will hook the wire tap itself into fuse number 37. We've got our four wires here, and um, you're gonna need to be able to strip them back a little bit, and so Different people have got different types of tools. I happen to have an auto auto uh, wire stripper. So I'm going to go ahead and just strip these back just a little bit. Just like so. Because we're going to be having to screw these wires into the, the LED uh, light controller. So... Um, there we go. So now that we've stripped our wires and we've got our, our controller, we're going to go ahead and we're going to start hooking the wires up to it. So now um, you're going to see here that your controller has a V plus and then an R channel 1, G channel 2, and a B channel 3. 
So your black wire coming off of the wind restrictor itself is going to go, the black wire is going to go to the V plus connector. So you're going to slide that in like so. If you, hopefully you can see that nice and clear. And we're going to tighten that up. You want to test it, make sure that you got a good connection, and then you're going to move on to the next one. So your red wire is going to go to channel 1, which it's marked with an R. And this screw needs to come out just a little bit. go and we'll tighten that one down again you don't want to reef it down but you want to get it pretty snug so it's nice and nice and tight there and then you're going to use your green wire on channel channel 2 Check that wire, make sure it's good. And then we're going to use the blue wire on channel three. All right, so now we've got a good connection on all four of the wires here. And now the next thing that we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be hooking up, I'm gonna strip the wires back and then we're gonna be hooking these connections onto here. Um, the black with the white tracer on the, the wire will be your positive, the solid black will be your negative. And then at that point, we'll be, we'll be attaching it to the car itself. So what we can do here, they've already pre-stripped part of it for us. So we're going to open these open these screws up a little bit. Like so, you remember the white the black wire with a white tracer is going to be your going to be your positive. And then your solid black wire is going to be your negative wire. Now the system does come with a set of uh, instructions. So um, you'll want to follow those instructions just in case they send you a different, uh, different color set. There is a possibility that they could send a different harness because things do change over time. So you just want to make sure that you familiarize yourself with the with the wiring before you go and plug this into the battery okay so we're just going to recap here we've got our wires hooked up over here this is the output of the unit and then we've got our incoming power that's hooked up over here and now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and we're going to mount this uh, we're going to mount this right here I'm set this right in place and instead of screws we're actually going to use wire ties and uh, we're going to zip tie it right here to this harness and one over to this side over here like that and then this will be pretty much out of the way and it'll be underneath this cover and um, so it's going to sit just like that so everything will be be nice and tucked away and it won't be touching anything so all we're doing here like that this is probably going to be kind of hard for you to see, but we're just utilizing the screw holes that they provide 
And instead of using the screws, we're just gonna use the zip ties. So what you wanna do is just get it started on one side so you can still move it around a little bit. And then once you get both sides started, then you can go ahead and tighten them up. Get it where you want it, snug it up. Get this one where you want it, snug it up. And then I'm gonna clip, just clip the excess wire off or the plastic off of the zip tie like so and that is in place and we're good to go right there so now that we've got the led controller in place what we're going to do is we're going to go over here and we're going to grab the fuse puller off of the off of the uh, fuse block here and we're going to pull this fuse which is the fuse 37 okay and we're going to get that little guy out of here we're going to pull it out and put our, our puller back over here. And then what we're going to do is we're going to put the fuse itself into this, this tap. And it goes right, there's a hole there for it. So we'll insert that in there like so. There we go. Just like that. Okay. And then what we do is we actually go ahead and it'll go into this one. Now it's a little bit easier to do this while it's out. So I'm gonna pull, I'm gonna separate these wires here. And remember the, the black wire with the white tracer is the one that you're gonna want, which is your power wire. So I'm just separating these wires here because we have to be able to use the black wire to go to the chassis ground. So we're going to but we need to cut the power cable so it's not so darn long. Okay, so we're gonna figure out how far we need it to be, somewhere in this ballpark or so, and then we're gonna go ahead and cut it. At that point, we'll strip it back. So we've got our tap and we've got our fuse put into the tap. Now what we're going to do is we've already stripped our wire here, our power wire, and we're just going to insert it into the uh, into our butt connector, just like so. And we're going to crimp it. Now again, I highly recommend that you use a pair of uh, a pair of dikes that'll actually uh, lock this down. Okay, and that's a nice nice tight fitting right there. So at that point, you're going to go ahead and you're going to insert it into the slot over here. Like so. So now we've got we've got our power and now all we have to do is get the ground wire set up. We're going to be hooking up the ground wire now and so I'm just going to be stripping this wire back. Just like so. And then you want to get yourself a, uh, a connector. Uh, the light is kind of drowning it out here, but you want to be able to get one of these connectors that you can that you can crimp onto your wire, and that'll make it so it's a nice clean installation. It's like so. Then you want to crimp that down. Let's see. Just like this. Make sure you got it crimped really well. And then we're going to be going to this bolt right here. The instructions show that you can go over to your main chassis ground up here, but I chose to go over at the battery itself. So this is a 10 millimeter bolt here, or nut, I should say.
Okay, so we are, we're bolted up, we're connected. So at this point, we'll just, uh, we'll button up our wires and get them laid out nice and tight there so they, uh, they're not just flopping around. And then we'll be able to test the unit. Okay, so now we're to the point where we can test the system. And what we need to do is we have to get the remote out of the uh, box that it came in. And it requires three AAA batteries um, that they are not included, so you'll need to make sure that you have some. Like so. All right, so now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and we're going to turn the accessories on on the car, and we'll give it a try and see if it works. Now that we've got everything all, all wired in, we're just going to go ahead and we're just going to check this now. So we're going to come over to the car. We're not going to start it. We're just going to press the press and hold the start button without being on the brake and just turn on the accessory. And if everything works well, our wind, our wind restrictor should light up. So I'm going to go ahead and push the button now. Just press and holding it. And the accessory mode should kick on. Now look at that. So we've got it wired up right. So here's the remote control here. And we can actually uh, turn it off from here, turn it back on, and we can adjust just by moving our thumb around the dial, we can actually dial in whatever color that we want. Just like that. Okay, so we'll go into further um, uh, operating of this here once we get it all put back together but we know that uh, it's all working now. We've got everything wired, we've tested it, it works so now what we're going to do is we're going to start putting it all back together and what I like to do is I like to cover the exposed wires where there might be any friction over the electronics lid so I'm just going to take a little bit of duct tape here and you could use duct tape, you could use masking tape, it's just to keep it from scarring the, the wires if there was any uh, anything going on there. So I'm just going to put it right over here. I'm just going to take these wires right here. This is the high point, so I just thought I would put this on there like so. Just like that. And then that way the wires aren't going to get chafed from, from this cover when it goes back on. I'm going to be just putting this back together now. Um, we're just putting putting the battery cover back on. I'm going to take the electronics cover. I'm going to put it back in its place just like so. Okay. And a lot of times people, just a little hint, the um, all of the uh, the specs for your car is actually hidden on this plate underneath your carpet. A lot of times I've known a lot of people that have had C7s, they don't know where the sticker is. It, they used to put these in the glove box, but they're here in the trunk now. So just, just so you know. Okay, so at this point we're just going to roll this, we're just reversing everything we just did, so we're just rolling this back down. Okay, we're going to get this down like so, and then we're going to go ahead and we'll tuck all of this in. So what we're going to do here is we're just tucking this in, we're again reversing it, so you're going to put a little bit of a, a little bit of a lip in here like so, lifting it up in the center, and then we're tucking it back underneath the plastic, just like that. Tuck down nice and neat. Tuck down, just like that. Okay, so that's all nice and neat down in there where it belongs. And then we're just going to put this ring back in. You don't have to put this in really, really tight. It's just, just snug it down. And then this cover just pops right on. Just like so. All right, so she's all buttoned back up. And now the fun begins. We get to actually play with it. I'm going to go ahead and put my cut my uh, carpet back in, um, and then uh, and put my put my skirt back on up here, the cargo cover, and we're finished. There's 
that. And then we're just gonna go ahead and put this, the cargo cover back in place. Okay, so that's all put back together. And now we're gonna go ahead and uh, turn it on and, and show it off a little bit. So here are some basic operating instructions for the LED kit with the remote control. So what we're going to do is you can see here that the, the wind restrictor is off and I'm going to go ahead and put the remote out here so you can see, it, see both the restrictor and the remote. Um, you have the basic on and off the top. We're going to go ahead and turn it on and then at that point you can see, let's see if I can get it so you'll be able to see a little bit better. We can pick anything along the ring here that will get us a different color whatever we want it to be at and that's what it'll stay at as a static color we also have the the intensity we can press the down arrow down over here to go down and you can press the top one to go up and then in between here in the circle you have two different buttons and these are all of the different programs that you can go through so as you cycle through them um, you can see what it will do. It has, like I said, different characteristics on each one of these. So as you tap it, it's going to start to go to like a blinking and changing. There we go, like that. Okay. Then the bottom one has some other programs in it too. There you go. And that's pretty much it. You can just play with those until you get the exact program that you want it to run, and then you're good to go. So guys, hopefully you like what you saw today, and if you did and you want to get one of these for yourself, be sure and use my link below, and also use the, the code Corvette Channel to get your 10% discount. If you decide you're going to call in, you can do that too, but be sure and give them the code Corvette Channel to get your 10% off. Thank you for watching. If you haven't subscribed yet, please subscribe to my channel. I'd really appreciate it. If you like the video, give me a thumbs up and hit that bell so you'll be notified of any of our future uploads. You guys have a great day and thanks for watching. Hi everyone, I'm Jennifer. Thanks for watching the Corvette channel. Don't forget to hit subscribe.